Hi there, welcome back to the Flask Mastery Series. I'm Gority Golden and in today's video we shall be covering the essential steps to setting up your Flask environment. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump right in. Alright, so before we get started, we shall ensure that we have the necessary prerequisites in place. We shall later on understand how to work with virtual environments in Flask. And lastly, we shall be installing Flask. First things first, you must ensure that you have Python installed on your system. So to confirm this, open your terminal or your command prompt. Type the command python dash dash version and press enter. So if Python was successfully installed on your system and its path added to the system environment variables, then your current version of Python will be displayed. So cases whereby you're getting an output like Python is not recognized as an internal program, then that means that if you actually installed the, the Python software in your system, then there might be chances that you did not add its path to your system environment variables so you need to fix that otherwise if you do not have python installed on your system head over to python.org which is the official site for downloading python so that you can install the latest python version on your system you should also choose an ide that will be used for writing and managing your flash code Popular choices include Visual Studio Code, which I'm going to be using for this series. There are other IDEs like Atom, PyCharm, and Sublime Text. So before we understand what virtual environments in Flask are, let's go ahead and create a directory that will be used to store the files we shall be working with while learning the Flask basics. So for my case, I'll be creating a folder within my Python projects folder. So I'll right click this and enter CMD, then press enter. Then this will open up the command prompt. So within the command prompt, I'm actually going to create a new directory. So I'll use the command mkdir, which stands for make directory. Then the name of the directory I'm going to work with. So we can actually create one called Flask Basics. So when you press enter, you can see that you're not having any output. But when you check out your graphical user interface, you can see that the folder was created. So most of the times you can actually work with a graphical user interface if you're a beginner, but later on with time when you're advanced, you can work with commands. So we can use cd whereby cd means change directory such that we open that folder so cd change directory flask basics then press enter so apparently we are into our flask basic directory that we are going to be working with so to open it up into our ide we can use the command code dot code space dot then enter so this only works for visual studio code and not these other ides so whenever we are working on any flask project we should always ensure that we are working within a virtual environment as it is a good practice to always isolate your flask project dependencies so virtual environments in Flask are isolated environments that allow you to manage and control the dependencies for a specific project. So whenever you are working within a virtual environment, you are avoiding conflicts between different projects that may require different versions of libraries or sometimes packages. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a virtual environment that we shall use to manage the dependencies we shall work with for our project.
Python comes pre-built with the Vim, which is the virtual environment module that we always use to create virtual environments. So for us to be able to create our virtual environment within our working directory, we shall first of all go ahead and open the terminal. So having we opened the terminal, we type Python dash M, where dash M stands for the module. And then the module we are trying to invoke is the virtual environment mod, which is denoted with V E N V VEMV. Then we follow it up with the name of the virtual environment. So for our case, we can actually keep it simple. But most of the times you've realized that some people name it as still virtual environment. So we can keep it simple and name it as basics env. Then we press enter. So you can see that on our side panel, a subfolder has been created. And when we try to maximize it, this is what we are having. So whenever you create a virtual environment within your Flask directory, or your Flask project, you always have to go ahead and activate this virtual environment. So for those working with our Windows operating system, we activate our virtual environment by writing. First of all, when you try to maximize this subfolder, you can see that we are having another subfolder called include, then you have lib, then followed by scripts. So we activate it by starting with the name of our virtual environment, basics env, then a backslash, backslash scripts, then backslash. So we see that within the script subfolder, we have this activate file. So we try to invoke it by writing activate. Then you press enter. So if it is your first time actually working with a virtual environment, you might encounter some challenges, but you can always fix this by opening up your Windows PowerShell as an administrator and setting up the execution policy in a way that you're activating the permissions so that you have the ability to always run your virtual environment successfully. So you see that currently the virtual environment has been set up with the fact that it has created the name of our virtual environment, which we have named as basics env. So that means that we are now set to install all the project dependencies that we are going to work with for our project. So having we successfully activated our virtual environment, we can now go ahead and install Flask. So for us to install any third-party libraries, we shall work with pip, which is Python's default package installer. So we can actually invoke it by typing python dash m pip install flask or you can actually invo invoke it directly by just writing pip install flask then you press enter so it will go ahead and install flask the flask library within our virtual environment so for us to confirm that flask has actually been installed we can always write flask dash dash version and we press enter so upon a successful installation this will be the output so we can see that we are having python 3.12 and flask 3.0 and then the worksag which is 3.01 I hope this session was insightful. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next video.